Hello! In this video, I want to show you how I have implemented basic movement mechanics for my Godot platformer. I will show you the code that allows my platformer character to run around, to jump, to do wall jumping and wall sliding, to do double jumping, to jump to various heights, and to dash horizontally. First, let's get a quick overview of the scene setup. I will not go too in-depth in this video, but maybe in some of my future tutorials I will take you step by step through the whole project construction. But for now, uh, all you need to know is that we have a level that contains all of the relevant assets. Level contains a simple background texture, a tile map that allows me to draw levels very quickly and easily. We have uh, assets for a door and a key uh, to allow the player to open the door using a key and then complete level once he gets through the door. We have our player scene, camera, and some spikes and obstacles, and one enemy. Let's open player scene. Here the setup is very simple. Player is a kinematic body. He has a collision shape and a sprite, and he has four ray casts that will be useful for us to implement wall jumping and sliding. So that's basically it, very simple stuff. Let's look at the code for the player. All of the relevant code is contained in this file and as you can see I have tried to make it very very short and very very simple. We do not have any fancy finite state machines but that's okay because uh, there is not a lot of complexity to what I'm trying to accomplish and I have tried to make it as simple and understandable as possible. So first to give you a quick large scale overview we load some textures and uh, set up some variables then we have a few lines of code that capture the mouse to make the mouse cursor invisible while we are playing the game. Then we have physics process that runs each of these functions uh, every frame of the game. And each function is responsible for its own aspect of movement. We have a function for running, jumping, dashing, applying friction, applying gravity, and for handling textures to give us a bit of a simple animation. All of these functions impact character's velocity, and then move and slide applies this velocity to actually make the character move. And then below that we just have the definitions of these functions. So let's just get started and see how each of these functions works. First we have running, which is extremely simple. When you press the movement buttons uh, for moving to the right or to the left, we simply add character speed to its velocity. Velocity is defined here and it is just a vector that represents uh, the character's movement. And speed is defined over here along with uh, other important variables like jump power, uh, friction, and gravity. So just by adding speed to the velocity, we get our character to move around. Also, if you look at the sprite, it has the parameter flip h. It makes the character face in the opposite direction. By default, the character is uh, looking to the right, so we set flip h to false. When we want it to run to the left, we set uh, flip h to true. Now, just to get it out of the way, let's quickly look at the friction function. If you would want to keep things as simple as possible, all you need to do is to multiply the character's velocity by some small number between 0 and 1. That's going to cause him to gradually slow down. When the player is pressing movement button, character's velocity is getting increased every frame, and multiplying it by a small number is going to decrease it every frame. When the player has released the movement button, it will cause the character to gradually slow down and stop. So this line is all you need to apply friction, but to have a little bit more control over the character's movement, I have defined two variables, stopping friction and running friction. Both of them are small numbers between 0 and 1. Running friction is applied when the player is holding the movement button. And this is done in order to limit the highest movement speed for the character. Stopping friction is applied when the player has released the movement button. Because this number is smaller, it will cause the character to slow down much faster. Which is what I want for my controller. I want the, my character to stop quickly once the player has released the button. That will make the character feel more controllable and less slippery. So in order to do that, I simply check if the player is holding movement button. If he does, I multiply velocity by running friction. If he doesn't, I multiply it by stopping friction. I also check if the character is on floor. If the character is on the air, I want the friction to be low. 
Now let's get to the fun part, jumping. We want our jump function to accomplish several things. First of all, we want to be able to jump to various heights. If I quickly press the jump button, our character will jump only a small distance. If I press and hold the jump button, the character will jump higher. The second thing I want is to be able to double jump. So if I press the jump button once I'm in the air, I jump a second time. I want to be able to jump from the floor. And when the character is next to the wall, I want to be able to jump as well. Let's look at how this works. First of all, if you want to do a simple jump, all you need to do is to add some vertical velocity. We have a variable called jump power, and we simply subtract it from velocity y, causing the character to move up. So whenever the player presses jump button and is able to jump, we move the character up. If we did not need double jump, we would simply check if the character is on floor or next to the wall. So that would be a very simple statement. If the player is pressing jump and the character is on floor or next to the wall, we jump. Next to the wall is a function that we will look at shortly that will simply use the ray casts to tell us whether or not the character is standing next to the wall. Instead of doing this, we are doing this because we want to be able to double jump. When the character is standing on floor or next to the wall, we are going to set the jump's left variable to 2. That means character is able to jump 2 times. Every time the character jumps, we decrease this variable by 1. So that's all you need to have double jump. Once the character is touching the floor or the wall, we recharge his ability to jump. And after he's in the air, this will simply decrease the amount of times he is able to jump. Very simple stuff. The next thing I want is to be able to vary jump height. Quick press will cause the character to jump a small distance. Pressing and holding the button will keep him moving up. So how does that work? The trick is in these two lines of code. That's all you need to do to vary jump height. If the player has released a jump button and the character is still moving upwards, we set his velocity to zero. What does this mean? Let's say we have a character who is about to jump. When the player presses the jump button, the character gets accelerated upwards, but gravity is pushing him down, so the vertical velocity is going to gradually decrease. And as he reaches the highest point, his velocity is going to be zero, and now the gravity will overpower it, and the character will start to fall. So what causes the character to move upwards is the fact that he has some vertical velocity. And without those two lines of code, whenever I press jump, he would just receive initial velocity once and would move up. And then once it runs out, he would move down. What we do here is we set the vertical velocity to zero halfway through the jump. So let's say default jump height would be this high, but instead the player wants to cut off the jump at the middle of this distance over here. At this point, the player is releasing the jump button. Once the player has released the jump button, we set vertical velocity to zero, and now the only force that is acting on this character is gravity that, that is pushing him down. So he immediately starts to fall. Also, we need to make sure that we do this only when the character is moving up. Finally, all that's left to explain are these two lines of code. All they do is to push the character away from the wall whenever he is jumping next to the wall. So when the character is next to the left wall, uh, we are pushing him uh, in the right direction. And when he is next to the right wall, we push him leftwards. So right now I'm on the left wall. And once I press jump, as you can see, he for a second moves to the right. That's what these lines of code do. Now let's see how we actually find out whether or not the character is standing next to the wall. Here in the player scene, we have ray casts. Ray casts are these four arrows, and they can tell us whether or not they are colliding with some object. We have two arrows pointing to the right to detect the right wall, and two arrows pointing to the left to detect the left wall, just to make sure that whenever the, any part of the character is touching the wall, he will be able to jump. And now we have three very simple functions. First, to find out whether or not the character is next to the left wall, we simply take 
one of the array casts and ask it whether or not it's colliding with something. If it's colliding with the wall, it's going to return true. And we will do that for both of the left ray casts. So if one of the left arrows is colliding with something, this function is going to return true, telling us that the character is next to the left wall. And this function does the same for the right ray casts. And finally, next to the wall function will tell us whether the character is next to the left wall or to the right wall. So either way, it will return true. And that's it. So we use these functions to allow the character to jump from the wall. Next to the wall will return true whenever the character is next to any wall. And here we need next to the left wall in order to push the character to the right. And next to the right wall to push the character to the left. Now let's see how to implement wall sliding. Whenever the character is touching the wall, we want him to fall much slower. So by default, when the character is in the air, the gravity pushes him down quite quickly. And when the character is touching the wall, we want him to still move down, but much slower. Accomplishing that is very, very simple. Let's look at the gravity function. By default, all you need to do is to add gravity to vertical velocity in order to move the character down. But let's say we want to limit the highest falling speed. Whenever the vertical velocity exceeds 800, we are going to reset it to 800. That way, uh, the vertical velocity can never be higher than 800. So if we want to do wall sliding, we do the exact same thing, except that we limit the vertical velocity to a much smaller number. Let me format the code for more readability. So we simply say, if the character is next to the wall, limit his velocity to 100. That way, whenever the character is next to the wall, he can only fall very slowly. And that's it. That's all there is to implementing wall sliding. Now let's look at dashing. Whenever the player presses dash button, I want to accelerate the character in the direction that he is looking at. If I press dash multiple times in the air, the character is going to be able to dash only once. The character gets accelerated in the direction that he's looking at. One thing to note is that whenever the character is dashing, he moves in the straight horizontal line. So gravity has no effect on him. But once the dash is over, gravity turns back on and the character begins to fall. So let's look at the code. First, we set the dash direction. If the player has pressed the right button, the dash direction is set to point to the right on the x-axis. And when the player is moving to the left, we set the dash direction to minus one on the horizontal axis. So basically, we just have a dash direction, which is a simple vector that points one union to the left or one union to the right, depending on where the character is looking at. And whenever a player presses dash button and the character is able to dash, we simply accelerate the character's velocity in this direction, multiplied by the dash speed. So this is a unit vector pointing to the right or to the left. We multiply it by dash speed and add it to horizontal velocity. Now to make sure that the character is able to dash only once, we have a can dash variable. Whenever the character touches the floor, the variable turns to true. So now the character can dash. Here we check whether or not he can dash. And once he has dashed, the variable flips to false. Imagine that he is right now in the air. He has dashed. We set it to false and he cannot dash anymore until he fall, falls to the floor and it flips back to true. All we need to do now is to make sure that we temporarily turn off the gravity whenever the character is dashing. Here we have a dashing variable also defined over here. So whenever the character is dashing, we set it to true. And whenever it's true, we disable the gravity. So as you can see, the gravity is applied only whenever the character is not dashing. When he is dashing, the, the gravity is disabled. Then this line creates a simple timer. Basically, this is a Godot trick that tells it to wait for half a second. So basically, we turn off the gravity, wait half a second, and turn the gravity back on. And that's it. That's all there is to dashing. And finally, all that is left is to look at the character's textures. By default, he has a square shape. But whenever he is running, we change its texture to a squished one. And whenever the character is touching the wall, we change its sprite to one more texture that is squished uh, horizontally. So we have a function that uh, tells the sprite to change between these three textures. We have a function called handle textures, 
By default, we set the sprite texture to idle texture, which is just a regular square character. When the character is wall sliding, when it's not on the floor and is next to the wall, so he is sliding down the wall, we tell the sprite to change its texture to the wall slide texture, to the squished one. If the character is next to the left wall, we don't flip the sprite, but if the character is next to the right wall, we do flip it so that the squish texture is pointing in different directions. When the character is running, so when the player is pressing the left or the right button, and if he is running on the floor, then we set the texture to run texture. If the character is jumping, so he is in the air and not on the floor, he will get back to the idle texture. So that's very simple switch between uh, a few textures. And that's it. That's all there is to platformer movement. I hope this tutorial was useful to you. If you want to look at the code for this project, just check the link in the description of this video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I am planning to release more interesting and useful tutorials and maybe even some video courses where I will take you step by step through creating various Godot games or just share some tips and tricks that I learned while using Godot. All right, if you have any questions, ask me in the comments and I will see you in my future videos.